Great morning, great morning. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures, giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise. This morning we are going, we were... Uh, the fool, or foolishness. And um, if you're like me, you can observe and see uh, the confusion that's going on. Sometimes you um, can see in your own lives, you know, just, just a, a mass amount of confusion. You know, it could be... Uh, living conditions. It could be in a community. It could be in a nation. The Lord begin to uh, give me an insight to confusion in a nation, confusion in a people, and confusion in a person. And uh, it's uh, all comes because of a departure from God. Anytime we depart from God, we are running straight into a state of confusion. Because only the fool says in his heart there is no God. And so we see that clearly um, the prophet Jeremiah, God had given him a word. And he was talking about the people provoking him. But he says, uh, I'm going to read that little scripture right uh, quick. And then we're going to pray. Because a lot of times we think that, you know, the understanding that we have that, you know, we are, we can outwit God, but when we depart from God, we are definitely running into a state of confusion. We will be there. Jeremiah seven nineteen says, do they provoke me to anger? Saith the Lord. Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? And that's what we're going to talk about today. Confusion of their own faces. I think that we do we are provoking God or questioning God or uh you know putting God to the test. He says, Do they provoke me to anger, says the Lord, or do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? So when we come up against God and we're gonna talk about um Job and a few other ones and talk about this confusion. And if you are like me, you can see it's happening from all the way up from the highest all the way down to the lowest. It's happening in families. It's happening in people. It's happening. Confusion. Just sheer confusion. You can see it in the homes. You can see it in your in your house. You know, we're going to pray. Let's pray. Father, we thank and praise you that you are present, all-knowing and all-powerful, and that you have sent your word to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Awaken our ear to hear as to learn. We repent of every thought, deed, contrary to you, Lord. We ask you to write your laws on the tables of our heart as we say yes to you in the mighty message name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we're talking about confusion. As we was on the prayer line this morning, the Mirror Life prayer line, we found out that um, we were talking about the current conditions. And I don't know about you, but I'm witnessing, which I've seen it more times than one, you, you know, people who are hoarding, hoarding, or um, uh, people uh, don't know, uh, their head from their tail. Uh, people don't know right from wrong. Uh, it's just a state of confusion. You know, uh, the Bible talks a lot a bit about that and why this some um, confusion comes. The clearly, scripture clearly just tells us that God is not the author of confusion. Uh, he's not the author of it. So where does this confusion come from? It comes from departing from the word of God. And so as we read in Jeremiah, God began to tell them, uh, do they provoke me to anger? Uh, do they come up against me? Are they, you know, challenging me? Uh, says the Lord, do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? So whenever we try to uh, reason, it is, that's what you got now, a lot of reasoning, you know, the ability of, uh, uh, humanism, a lot of reasoning powers, you know, because I got a little bit of knowledge and now I'm going to challenge what the maker of heaven and earth is doing, but that's not going to work because uh, <laughs> his ways are past finding out. Uh, we started talking in Matthew, the 22nd um, chapter with uh, Mother Thompson on the prayer call, uh, which tied into what I was ta studying about Job. And that particular chapter of the 22nd chapter of Matthew talks about um, when the people was questioning Jesus, the scripture says in Mark and in Matthew that they oftentimes watched him to see what he did and what he said so that they could ensnare him. So they could, uh, 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 you know, find fault in him. So 
to a state of confusion is in a state of being that in a state of uh, to snare or intertwine or entrap. And the word confusion is in the word of entangle because they tried to entangle Christ. So they wanted to get him to the place where they could find some fault with him by what he said, which we know this power of life and death in the tongue. So when we say something, I know many times I have said something to somebody, well, I'm going to do so-and-so, so. So therefore, that person will come right back and say, you said, you said you're going to do this here, and you didn't do it. And therefore, they go and accuse you before God, which the Bible says the devil is the accuser of the brethren, you know. So then sometimes when you say something, that's why the Bible says, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay and anything else come of evil because the enemy is going to take it and say, you said it. And since you said it, you didn't do it. So I'm going to accuse you before God and say, God, you need to, you need to punish that person because they didn't do what they say. So the, that's why the Bible says, um, forgiving one another. You know, we have to learn how to forgive one another if, if somebody have ought with you. But that power of the tongue is a powerful thing. And even the Bible said, our thoughts, which God knows our thoughts are far off. He knows them are far off before we even think them. He said, I already know you what you're, what you're thinking about. So he already know those thoughts. And we find out here in the scriptures, um, which we're going to go to some of the scriptures, that the people, uh, as we talk about Job, Job, which we always cite Job. Job is always someone we see who has gone through the test. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to Job. Job said a couple of times, he said in the third chapter of Job, which we're going to read. Job, the third chapter. As we talk about confusion, where does this confusion come? Now, we know the Bible said Job was upright in his way, but then God allowed him to be tested. And everybody always wondered, well, why he let him be tested if he's so perfect? You know, but do we see something that Job said or thought? Is, is is according to this here. I believe this is one of the reasons why God uh let this come forward. Uh, Job three verses twenty five says. Uh, it says, "For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest." Neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. But the thing he said, the thing I feared. Now, the Bible says perfect love, perfect love, which God is love, cast out fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear. So when we have fear, fear has torment. So now here we see our brother Job. Apparently, he said the thing which he greatly feared, that was in his spirit. We were talking about God working in us, you know, perfecting that which concerns us. God is flushing out some stuff. I believe in the season of time now, a lot of stuff being flushed out. But Job's situation came because he greatly feared this thing. So we go into Job now, the 10th chapter, verses 15. Um, and we see here, talking about confusion, when the adversary had the permission to tempt Job, to test Job, to try Job, which he did. Job said, what I fear now has come upon me. Okay, so it's been flushed out. It's been brought to the surface. Job says in the 15th verse of the 10th chapter, uh, well, 14th verse, if I sin, then thou makest, markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from my iniquity. So Job is talking to God and saying, if he had sinned, if I had sinned, if I be wicked, woe unto me. And if I be righteous, yet will I not lift up my head. I am full of confusion. So now Job confessed now. All this is happening to him. I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused. Now when God starts searching us, he said, I searched the heart and try the vein. When he starts searching us and start bringing up some stuff that you didn't even know was in there, it's a mess. Job said he's now full of confusion. So the third chapter, he said, the thing he greatly feared has now come upon him. Now he said he's full of confusion. I'm full of confusion. Therefore, see thou my affliction. Now, clearly, the Bible says in Proverbs 6 and 2, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken 
with thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. So with your mouth, remember snare with the Job said, this thing I thought about and I feared, now it's come upon me. And then he said, he's full of confusion. The Bible talks about confusion. Uh, as we look look into the scriptures, when confusion is there or, or a person is entangled, it says um, they're not able to discern. We see, we see a lot of states where people in schizophrenia or manic depression, even in this current time, a lot of people mind, they don't know if they are. It's that they used to have this thing that says uh, on the TV, are you a boy or a girl? And it, it was like a, a TV uh, little voice, and it came on. I don't know if it was a computer, but it says, are you a boy or a girl? But the scriptures tells us in the scriptures that the time will come that God will deal with man when he departs from the truth of God, when he moves away from God, that God will turn them over to a reprobate mind. Okay? They will turn he will turn them over to a reprobate mind. Um Romans, we're gonna go to Romans. We're not making this longer, we're talking about the spirit of confusion. And believe me, there is some confusion going on in the world today. And we talked this morning about the state that the that the world is in now, it didn't just start today. It started back now. I born in the fifties. When uh you had a church to go to, you had your Bible verses to read, you had your community, you had the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and boys was boys and girls was girls, and now you got you know, it's all mixed up. It's confusion. Okay. Now we got to the place now where you used to be able to go to the house of, of God and talk to the preacher and tell him your uh or tell him your stuff and get some prayer. Now Children are uh, sent to the church. Many times they're molested. You know, you got all kinds of confusion. And it's not only happened in the churches. It's happening in houses. We was talking this morning where we used to sit down at the table and eat. Now you can't come together. Everybody got a, a microwave or a fast food or a, um, a DoorDash or, or Uber food. And nobody's talking to anybody else. It, it's just division and separation. It's just a state of confusion. You know. Uh, laws are being made, making right wrong and wrong right. But anyway, God began to tell us in Romans. Romans, um, it's called Romans, the first chapter. It says the result of the Gentile world apostasy. This is a state of apostasy, apostasy going on, okay? Uh, And this word apostasy is it departing from God. It says, wherefore God has given them uh, well, we're going to move back up a little bit further to the 18th verse. The guilty world before God. The wrath of God is revealed. For the wrath of God is revealed, this is the first chapter of Romans, against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Remember we talked about Jeremiah said, they're trying to provoke me, but they're provoking themselves through the confusion of faces. That's what God tell him. He said, you, you, ain't come, you ain't hurting me because when you come against me, it's hard to kick against a prick. You're not going to kick against God and, and be able to get away from uh, being injured yourself. But anyway, let's read this and then we're going to get ready to close. It says, uh, who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifested in them. For God has showed it unto them. God has showed it into everything that he's made that he is God. Now, why they not acting like they know God? Why they have decided that I'm going to go my own way and he's too far off and I'm going to do what I want to do. But you remember, he clearly said confusion of your own faces. Okay. It's not going to be against God. It's going to be confusion of your own faces. This is what God said in the scriptures here. They could be to come. Jeremiah 7 said the confusion of their own faces. That's what's going to happen. When you decide I'm going I'm to go the opposite of God. Do they provoke me, he said, to anger, saith the Lord? Do, not, do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Okay, because so this is going back to Romans. And he clearly said, because they that which may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has showed it to, unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world was clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, 
so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. Now we in a generation of unthankful people. Unthankful. And God hates and angry. You're ungrateful, you don't like it. Okay? That's why you get confusion of faces. That's why your spirit of schizophrenia, manic depression, uh, uh all this stuff is running rampant because departing from the truth. Not just our children, the parents, me. 70 years, Daniel was talking about, um, Daniel was praying and Daniel was saying, Lord, uh, you are righteous. Daniel, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 19. John, Daniel said, God, you are righteous. Confusion of faces belong unto us because we have departed from you. We have sinned. That's why we are in a state of confusion. Okay? It says, uh, but when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. We're talking about confusion, fools and confusion. Anytime we depart from the light or the gospel or the way of God, we are into a position where we are going to be in a state of confusion. Okay? There's a lot of stuff in this word. And the only solution is to repent, turn back to God. Ask God, as, as, as we see in Psalms, this is the prayer. Psalms 71. You know, 71 is the first state. And you got to get to the place and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for I have sinned. Help me not to be caught up in a state of confusion. I had this scripture here. It's uh, Psalm 71. That's how we're going to close out. Now, this is Romans. You get a chance to read Romans. Romans 1 uh, for 18 all the way down and read it all the way down to 20, 32. Now, this is saying if you feel yourself in a state of confusion, you can tell the bed's not made, junk on the floor, uh, uh, hair looking all crazy. Uh, uh, listen, you look up the word confusion and see if it, I mean, this is personally. I'm going to straighten it up my house and straighten it up not only my house, but straighten it up me. Sometimes your mind is all confused because the Bible says, Psalms 119, 130, the entrance of the word of God bring light. So God brings light, okay, to those who are falling after him. Praise God. But you can get to the place where it, you uh, resist God and turn away from God. That's what Romans talk about. But the problem is, you're going to be in a state of confusion. You're not going to know your head from your tail. You're going to be turned around. And, and like the people, children of Israel, they went out to battle, went out to war. And the Bible said they, they started killing each other. And, and that's what's happening now. People killing each other in neighborhoods, killing each other. Why? Okay. Because they're in a state of confusion. This is what Psalm 61, and we're closing out. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covenant of thy wings. For thou, O Lord, hast heard my voice. Thou hast given me the tongue, have given me the inheritance of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many for many generations. He shall abide before God forever. A prepare mercy and oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praises unto the Lord. This Psalm 61. Hallelujah. I, I, so when I sing prison, so when it says, I will cry unto the Lord, I will call out, call out upon the name of the Lord. I will call on his name. Hallelujah. And there's another one I want to do. Psalm 71. We're going there right quick. I was going to close out, but I want to get this one here in. But I pray that you understand this spirit of confusion is going to remain. It's going to remain in the lives of people who walk away from God. Those who walk away from God. Psalm 71, verses 1 through 5. And it says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. Now, what you escape? The author of confusion, which is not God. The author of confusion 
is the adversary. He will bring confusion in your life when you depart from God. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortune. Deliver me, O my God, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel men. For thou art my hope, O Lord, thou art my trust from my youth. Amen. So we had uh, Psalm 61, Psalm 71 as a prayer. So we're going to close out. We thank God for this day. The spirit of confusion will continue to follow anyone who departs from the word of God. And they're going to have strong delusions. It's called into the scriptures, strong delusions, strong delusions. But this is a day that, that God has made and God is calling us to return unto him. And we pray that this word has been a blessing. Confusion belongs to the fool that said in his heart, there is no God and live a life that's contrary to God. We pray that it's not you and I pray that's not me. I'm praying it's not me and I'm praying it's not you, that we will walk in the light of the word for the interest of the word of God bring light. But those who walk contrary, God is going to send them a strong delusions, turn them over to a reprobate mind. We are praying for all of our children and everybody. The gospel of Jesus Christ will penetrate that doctrine and bring us to the light. Be blessed and walk in victory. Let us pray. Father, we thank and praise you for your word going forth into the ears of the hearers, into the hearts of believers, converted them into your kingdom. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask these blessings and count it done. Amen.